Hallelujah. Can you all just lift your hands and say hallelujah? Amen. See, one thing we need to understand is that we are in the presence of the Lord. How many of you believe that? So when we are saying something here, when I'm saying something here, I'm not prepared. Like, okay, I'm going to say this to you guys. Come on, put your hands up and say hallelujah. When I am saying something, it's not me. The Holy Spirit is saying through me, hallelujah. So we need to respect the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. Church, feel free to worship Him from the bottom of your hearts. Worship is something that I can't make you to worship. It should come from the bottom of your hearts. The Bible says like this, ask in anything in His name and it shall be given to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want something, if I want something, I have to ask. Same like the son asking to a dad, he will cry to his dad, Daddy, I need that. And it's the right thing he will give to the son. Hallelujah. You don't have to look here and there that how he is worshiping or how she is worshiping. Come on, children. You have to worship the law. You have to start practicing from today. When we go to heaven, there is only one thing that we have to do, that worship Him. Hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing amen. You know, a new song should come from the bottom of your hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church, make some noise before Him. Give a big thank to Him. Raise your voice, raise your voice. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus, giving glory, giving honor to your name, Jesus. Lord, you fill us, oh God, you fill us, oh God. Lord, you touch us, Jesus. Come on, choir, I want you to support me. Come on, do me, make me in prayer. Come on, keep singing, keep singing. Sing a new song. Thank you. Come on, church, raise your voice, raise your voice. Allow the Holy Spirit. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Sing with me, church. Blessed be your name. Sing with me. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name of the Lord. One more time, you're going to sing in a loud voice. Blessed be your name.
have today's Bible reading from Psalms 138. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. And on which concerns me, your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Now let's take up the bulletin in our hands and pray for the prayer points. I encourage the church to praise along and pray to our God because he deserves the praise and all the glory. All right, let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this lovely time that you've given us, Lord. Lord, I thank you that we've able to come as a church once again to just congregate in your presence, Lord Jesus. And Lord, right now, I just place my hands upon the prayer points, Lord Father, that you will answer, Lord, that you will come down and that you'll hear us, Lord Master God. Lord, right now, I just thank you for the elders and the pastors, Lord Father. I just pray that your hand will be upon them right now, Lord. Lord, right now, I just pray for Pastor Brito as he's at uh, he's in India, Lord. I just pray that as he's ministering over there, Lord, you pour out your spirit, Lord Jesus. Lord, that you'll be able to talk to the people there, Lord, through his words, Lord. That you'll anoint his spirit, you'll anoint his words, Lord Father, and that you'll come down upon the place, Lord God. That you'll touch the people, Lord Father. Lord, I just thank you for the church members here in BNLCF, Lord God. Lord, that you'll strengthen each one of us, Lord God. That you'll help us move closer to you, Lord Father. That we'll have that thirst for you, that hunger for you, Lord Master, to grow spiritually, Lord Jesus. I just pray that you pour out your spirits upon us right now too, Lord Father. Lord, I just thank you for all the um, persecuted churches in Sri Lanka, Lord Father. I just pray that you bring peace upon these nations, Lord Master, that you'll be able to move upon these nations and just show your glory, Lord Father God. Lord, I thank you for all the missionary peoples, Lord Father. I just pray that you grant them grace, you grant them the boldness in their spirit, Lord Father, for them to be able to do your work, Lord God. I pray that you, they'll be the mouthpieces of you, Lord Father. Lord, I just pray right now for the job opportunities, Lord Father. Lord, I pray that you'll open a path way for these people, Lord Father. Lord, that your grace will be able to be found through them, Lord Father, that the jobs will be able to be blessed, Lord Father, that you'll be a minister, you'll be able to minister through them, Lord God. Lord, right now, I thank you for good health for um, Jebaka, Lord Father. I pray that you bless her, that you strengthen her and protect her, Lord Master. Lord, I thank you for the physical and emotional healing of Brother Chandra and Lord Father and all the other people too, Lord Father. I pray that, Lord, you, we know that you're a God that heals, Lord Father, and I just pray that you touch them, Lord God. Lord, that you'll be able to bless and pour your spirit upon healing upon them, Lord Master. Lord, I just thank you for all the people that are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries, Lord God. Lord, you've given the grace to, uh, for another year, Lord. I pray that in this new year that they'll be able to minister to you, Lord Father God, that they'll be able to show you you, Lord Father. Show who you are to their environment, Lord God. Lord, right now, I thank you for listening to our prayers, Lord God. I pray that as we enter a time of worship, I pray that you pour out your spirit, Lord, that you come upon us right now, Lord God, that we'll be able to bask in your presence, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you come, Lord Father, Lord, that you touch the hearts, Lord God. You touch the broken spirits, Lord God, and that you lift us up, Lord Master. Lord, I pray all this in your precious name, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. All the time. Fantastic. I'm a Vasika Keta in the 138th, Psalm 138th. We all like this song because the song, this uh, verse, this chapter finishes with verse 8. You know what? What was that? Wherever we go, Hallelujah. It is true. See, this Psalms, if you see, there are two, only two portions in that. See, when you read through, there are only two points in that. One is praise, then the second thing is what God is going to do for you. See, if you turn with me that with the Psalm 138, verse 1 will say, I will praise. The second verse will say, I worship you. The third verse, fourth verse say, all kings praise you. Then the verse fifth say, they will sing your name. They will sing. See, I praise you. I will worship you. All kings praise you. Everyone will sing about you. See, this four, five, four, up to five, verse five, this all say, you have to praise, praise, praise. That's what we are doing. It's a wonderful song, that second one. Blessed be your name. Karthar kodutthalo seri, kodutthalo seri, kodutthalo seri. Nan karthar ye? Hallelujah. God, you to give, you take, and I still I worship you, I'll praise your name, I'll enjoy, I'll, I'll celebrate your name. 
because that's a wonderful name the second portion what it says if you see from verse 3 he answers me he strengthened my soul see this is what god is going to do see some say that he is going to praise and then what god is going to do what he has done he has answered my prayer see in tamil what it says naan koopitta naalile enakku maru uthra vaadunni see how wonderful he is the second one he says in verse 5 his glory is great then the verse 6 says this high god regards lowly enadhu thamai eppadi irukke avar thaalmai ullavane nokki paarkkira hallelujah magime perundhu appo perutha devan periya uyarndha devan thaalmai ullavargale nokki paarkkira nokki paarkkira na he is focusing on you ayyo na thaalndu poittene anega kaaryangale na thaalndu poittene appdi nenaikkira indha sagodharane sagodriye indha naalile tharthu solrar unnai nokki paarkkira dev our god is a god even so is a great god the king of kings lord of lord but he looks he focuses on people those who are lowly thaalmai ullavane nokki paarkkira see how wonderful the the verse 7 say though you walk in the midst of a trouble how is it naan thunbathin naduvil nadandalum neer enna uyirpippi that is our great god see this is what god is going to do who is continuously praising continuously worshiping continuously lifting his name that's what we are here for hallelujah hallelujah then finally he says he is going to perform what concerns you if it concerns you it concerns him hallelujah unnai adi baadithal ad devane baadik adha avu solra unnai unude karyangale ipo konja neram kangalai moodi devane nokki paarkuma just look upon lord you said taarmai ullane nokki paarkira devan en koopidudalai kekkira devan andavare enakka yaavum seidhu mudikira devan naan umai thuvippen naan umai thuvippen karangalai thatti devanukku namal nanri seluthuvoma yes 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 lord praise you jesus praise you praise you praise you we worship you lord we worship you we worship you hallelujah we join with the people we worship you name hallelujah nanri nanri praise you jesus Hallelujah. In Psalms 23, 4, it says like this. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord is powerful. As we are singing this song, feel free to worship Him. If you want to kneel down before Him, just do that. God is greater. He's the king of all kings. We lift your name high, Jesus. Claim your awesome power.
the world that he gave his only one begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life God came from heaven to earth and died for our sins for your sins thank you Jesus Your love is my love, your love. 
God, for giving us this day, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us, Lord God. You are our almighty God, Lord Jesus, Father. You are the highest on heaven and earth, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We know that you give and you take away, but in your name, we are still blessed, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing us with another day so we can praise your name. In your name I pray. Amen. Let's all give a big clap one more time. Council comes from 2 Corinthians. So if you brought your Bible, can you please take, uh, turn to page um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Uh, so I'll read it in English, and then I would like someone to read it in Tamil. Uh, it says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Amen? Amen. Can I have someone read it in Tamil, please? Thank you. Um, okay, so we've all got weaknesses, yes? Yes? Uh, some of us, for some of us, uh, we allow our weaknesses to stop us from what we want to do, or we uh, allow our weakness to take over our lives, and so it stops us from moving forward. How many of you have experienced that? You know, your weakness has just stopped you from doing something you really want, or stopped you from achieving something that you really need to do. Uh, for some of you, it would be like getting that job. You know, like uh, you think that you can't get that job because you lack something. You know, you're weak in something. For others, it's getting your driving license, you know, getting your driver's license. Uh, you know, you have this fear and the fear becomes your weakness. And so you go, okay, I can't take my license. I, you know, I, I'm too scared to drive. Uh, many of you ladies, I think, can relate to that. Um, so... Sometimes we think too much about the logic behind God's ways and begin to feel that there's no way God can use me. Uh, I don't have anything great. I'm weak. Uh, if only I had this and I had that, then God will use me in this way. You know, we begin to plan in our heads. If I can speak like the pastor can, I can stand here and, and preach. Uh, if I can sing like her, then I can uh, lead worship. You know, and we begin to form these uh, things in our head, how God can use you, you know, and, um, but God doesn't need for you to do that. He says in 2 Corinthians, he says what? My grace is sufficient for you and my p power is made perfect in your weakness. Um, in, when we look at Genesis, it says there, you know, that God created something out of nothing. So don't you think that he can turn your weakness into a strength? Amen? Okay, so uh, I'd like to um, draw your attention to uh, the world's criteria for success or, you know, um, your criteria that you have for yourself to overcome your weakness. So when you look at this criteria, you can see there, you know, this is a bit like a job criteria. When you go for a job interview, the boss will be looking to see whether you can speak fluently. Yes? Uh, whether you can write clearly, work in a team, have computer skills, and obviously no criminal record. Amen? Okay. Uh, so some of us would look at this criteria and you'll be overwhelmed. You think, okay, I can't tick off any of those boxes. For some of you, you can tick off two, maybe one. Um, so when we look at this criteria for ourselves, we are not qualified to turn our weakness into strength. Now, God has a criteria for you and He's only got one criteria. And that being that you have a heart after God, okay? An obedient heart. That's all He's looking for. A heart after God, which is an obedient heart. Now, today I'd like to share with you four examples of unlikely candidates, you know, who had weaknesses, yet they were used by God. The first one, Everybody knows Moses. Amen? Okay, now Moses was the prince of Egypt. We know that he grew up in luxury and did not have to endure the hardship like the rest of the people uh, did. You know, the Israelites suffered under Pharaoh, but Moses didn't have to go through all of that. Uh, so he, was, he would not have been able to relate to the sufferings of the Israelites, don't you think? Okay, um, and he, he was a criminal because he murdered an Egyptian. And he had a stutter problem. He was not able to communicate properly. 
Now, if I was looking at Moses, Moses was like a captain to the Israelites. So as a teacher, if I was choosing a captain for the class, Moses would not have qualified, you know, because he has all the weaknesses uh, of a leader. You know, when you're choosing a leader, he would not be qualified. Yet, God chose him to lead the Israelites. Moses was blessed by God to lead the people. And God's grace uh, was sufficient for him. And God's power was made perfect in his weakness. Amen. Now, the second candidate is David. Everybody knows the story of David? Yes. Now, David was a shepherd boy. No training in battle. All the weapons and armor were too big for him. Um, and he, there were so many experienced soldiers who had tried and failed. Yet God chose him to defeat Goliath. God blessed him with knowledge and courage to win the battle. Third candidate, you might think, okay, well, these are all characters from the Bible times. What about now? What about in today's world? Well, here was a man, uh, Ben Carson. Some of you would have heard of him. Now, he was an unlikely candidate because, now he came from a single parent home. Only his mum was raising him and his mum was illiterate, which means that she could not read or write properly. They were poor. The mum worked as a cleaner. And he was an African American and for, you know, um, you guys know the history of um, America. In, the, in America, America was a racist country. The, the African Americans were held back. They were not able to succeed. And yet, all the odds were against him. Yet, God chose him. And he was also uh, known as the class dummy. You know, and, and God chose him to be blessed. And he became the world's best neurosurgeon. Okay, so God turned his weakness into a strength. And finally, uh, I'd like you, um, to share my testimony. There's me. I, I was, um, I was, God, you know, God's grace was sufficient in my life because um, when I came to Australia, I did not know a word of English and had trouble learning the language. Uh, and in primary school, uh, English was my weakest subject. You know, uh, at, at the end of every year, you get a report. And you, in the report, there's a section for your strengths and your weakness. And every time uh, we had to write something for our weakness, I would always write English. I need to improve in English. But God had a plan. And He blessed me um, you know, beyond what I expected. And I, I stand here today you know, um, and can tell you that, you know, God has blessed me to be a, uh, to be an English teacher. And sometimes I wonder, you know, how he did that because I struggled with the language to begin with, you know, and, and um, he turned my weakness into a strength. Even though I had put it down as a weakness, God saw it as a way to use me and he turned it into a strength. So if you have a weakness, praise God, because that means God can use you, you know, and, and He can turn that strength, He can turn that weakness into a strength. And it's only when you have weaknesses, uh, God's glory can be revealed, you know, and, and, and you can stand here and testify. If, or if um, you know, you were able to tick off all the boxes and you, you were full of strength, God would not be able to use you, you know, and, and today I'd like, to tell you there is only one criteria for God's blessing to take root in your life and that is you surrender everything you are and have to Him and His grace will be sufficient for you and your weakness uh, will be His strength, okay? And His strength will be made perfect in you. Thank you and God bless you.